It's time for a mobile crane at the smaller end of the scale. It is the Tadano AC 2.040-1 and it's a model made by Tadano's preferred model supplier, IMC. We go straight onto the weight bridge and the box weighs 2 pounds 10 ounces and that's just about 1.2 kilograms. Okay, let's open up the box and see what's inside. As usual, there's a pair of expanded polystyrene trays and there's a small instruction booklet, which we'll look at in a moment. The packaging is nice because the trays are held together by plastic clips at the end, so there's no messy cutting of tapes. With the lid off, we can see all the parts are wrapped in soft paper. Okay, as promised, we'll look at the small instruction book, and it's a high quality piece of work. It starts by showing how the parts are packed within the tray, and there's also a full parts list. And that's always helpful to make sure that you've got all the parts that you should have. The manual then moves on to show the crane in transport mode, and it goes on to the assembly necessary to put it in an operational mode. The manual is written in English and all the photos are clear. After showing the crane in its basic configuration, we then go on to the various jib assemblies that are possible. And that includes either a small runner jib or the fly jib. After that, it's a nice touch that there is information about the real crane. And that includes a nice line diagram with the main dimensions. The presentation of the model is really good because it does include some high quality tools, including tweezers and pliers. And it's helpful that pins used for the assembly come in numbered bags. And there are plenty of spares included. For the assembly, we'll get the crane on the road and we can start by putting the counterweight on the middle of the carrier deck. And there's also a separate piece which clips on at the back. Another piece which is not mentioned in the manual is a ladder and that also clips on at the back. The crane can also carry a fly jib, but to sit it properly on its supports, you really need to put a pin in the eyelet at the boom head. As an option, you can fit a small runner jib. Let's check out the weight of the assembled model and it's one pound 10 ounces or about 750 grams. With the model in upside down mode, we can see it's typically detailed for an IMC model. The axles and transmission system are fully modeled and there's a nice metal tank. The rear axle steering is modeled, but we'll say more about that later. And the big tires have a decent tread pattern. The carrier cab is typically detailed with various mirrors and lights. There are small graphics and the door handles are highlighted. The big hook is a metal part with nice graphics applied and the sheaves are coloured to represent the nylon of the real crane. Behind the carrier cab there's a shaped fairing and you can see that there are nice textured surfaces and a skirt represented above the wheel. The wheels look good, only missing the red nuts of the real crane. The ladder steps up to the cab are replicated, and the cab itself has some very nice graphics on the outside. There's a metal grab rail, and on the inside you can see detailed computer console screens. At the back of the crane the details are busy with nicely formed lights, and there are plenty of fine casting details, and overall it looks very realistic. On the opposite side of the crane you can see the nice fuel tank with its filler cap. And the crane is interesting because of its offset winch. And you can see where the root of the rope gets special treatment on the boom. The lattice fly jib is a reasonable looking metal part. While we're on this side of the model the exhaust pipe is good because it has a proper looking hole. And if we move on to the outriggers the beams are very detailed with many graphics. Although more old fashioned are the pistons with their visible screw threads. Behind the carrier cab there are plenty of nice grills and textured surfaces. The 
wheels on the crane are nicely free rolling and the front axle has notched steering with a reasonable range of movement. The real crane also has steering on the rear axle and although the mechanism is modelled it seems to be non-functional. However there is very good suspension and that applies to both axles. Out on the Cranes Etc Super Highway and the crane rolls very well indeed. And if we set the steering we can produce quite a sharp turning angle. And of course if you like to bob up and down then the suspension on the model can certainly give you that feeling. We're on site now so let's set up the crane and we'll begin by pulling out the single stage outrigger beams. And you can lower the pads in the usual way by unscrewing them. The pistons have a useful length of travel and also included with the model are a nice set of metal spreader plates. With the crane set on these it can be high enough for it to be wheels free. The outrigger beams are not perfectly straight when they're extended and that's because of tolerances in the moving parts. An easy way to improve that if you want to make the model look better when it's posed on its outriggers is to put a thin piece of card or something similar and just pack out the gap above the top of the outrigger beam. And if you do that you can get the beam looking in a fairly straight position. So this is a good way to improve the look if you want to pose the model this way permanently. Let's move on with setting the crane up and the winch is operated by using a supplied key. And the braking action of the winch is provided by friction and that works well enough on this model. With the hook disconnected from the transport position we can proceed to raise the boom. And that works very easily because there's no friction in the main boom ram. As usual you can lock the boom angle by using a key on a grub screw. And on this model the key is very delicate so you need to be careful not to over tighten. The crane has a step which can be extended from underneath the cab and the pliers come in handy for this. And to fit the counterweight we first need to take off the piece that's been added at the back and then offer up the main counterweight from below. Once it's in position it's secured by two pins. And then the counterweight assembly is completed by adding back the back piece of counterweight that we previously took off. And this all works well because it keeps the pins we've just installed from falling out. Also included with the model is a heavy Tadano plate. And it's best to hang a weight on the hook when using the winch or telescoping the boom. The boom includes locking points for each section at approximately 50% and 100% and you extend the telescope in the usual way by just pulling out the sections. These all work smoothly and easily enough. Another feature of the model is the tilting cab and it poses well. With the crane set up you can have a go at playing crane driver. If you want some extra reach you can add on the lattice fly jib and that carefully gets pinned in place with four short pins. These work okay but you need to be careful not to knock the jib off and there's a tricky bit of reeving to run the hoist rope to the jib end and actually it's easiest to reeve the jib before fitting it on. There's only one hook with the model and really it needs a single line hook to look better. There's a mechanical ratchet system to alter the angle of the fly jib and when you've got the angle you want you lock it in place with steel pins. As another option you can also fit a short runner jib. This pins on in the same way and as an alternative you can also carry it folded in transport mode. Okay for completeness let's do a dim check and to the top of the main boom it's about 29 inches or 74 centimeters. 
and with the fly jib you get to 35 inches or about 90 centimeters. This is another very good looking Tadano crane model from IMC. As we've come to expect the standard of detailing is very high, the presentation of the model is really good, and the functionality is also of a high standard. So if you want a two axle crane in your fleet, then overall it is excellent. Music